Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this thrilling, chilling, and ultra-fulfilling episode of The Burt Brigade, brought to you by The Liberty Daily. <laughs> Why are you staring at me while you say that? <laughs> I'm looking for your reaction and the eye roll. <laughs> your conservative alternative to the Drudge Report. We're talking about the Liberty Daily. Visit the Liberty Daily at thelibertydaily.com. I'm Matthew Burke, your co-host. And I am Jennifer Burke, your other co-host. Good evening, my dear. Good evening, sweetie. Are you ready to rock and roll here? Let's do this! Okay, tonight's episode we have called Crazy, Crazy, Crazy. The leftist lunatics are imploding. Dr. Seuss is now a racist in this utterly effed up world. How quick did it take for the left to go from being slavery is wrong to now we have to tear down the monuments to now Dr. Seuss is a racist. Like a New well, York minute. they never minute. said slavery is wrong. They tried to keep slavery. Well, it was their idea. Right. But I digress. Okay, so we know that uh, Dr. Seuss... Uh, you know, the the beloved Dr. Seuss. Like, who didn't grow up reading Dr. Seuss? I mean, I grew up reading Dr. Seuss, watching uh, uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Every yes. Day. I still watch it to this day, don't I, hon? Yes, you absolutely do. And she forces me to watch it. And if I don't do it, she beats me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> don't believe that noise. I and I'm not going to say I don't enjoy it a little bit. But that's a whole different thing. <laughs> You're <topic>. insane. <laughs> okay. A uh, little TMI there for the audience. All right. So, Melania yeah. Trump, the first lady, tried to donate some Dr. Seuss books. What a beautiful gesture. Right. Except what happened? Okay. So, the schools were selected by Education Secretary Betsy DeVos. She looked at, you know, top performing schools in every state. Uh-huh. So, she chose this one school in Cambridge. Massachusetts, Cambridge, home to Harvard. Who went to Harvard? Well, Ted Cruz went to Harvard, but the media more wants to talk about Barack Obama, who went to Harvard, who was the first Harvard Review editor who never had anything published by the Harvard Review, but I digress. I think we call that black privilege. <laughs> so uh, this, this, this um, librarian was so indignant. She wrote a letter to Melania Trump saying, How dare you send us these books? Dr. Seuss books have, have racism just basically saying it's dripping and oozing in every, on every page. And it's, you know, it's whatever. I guess tons of microaggressions in Dr. Seuss. And why, why don't you send this money to, to, to uh, less privileged schools, you know, and talking about minorities because, you know, I guess she thinks minority schools can't achieve anything, even though I've worked at some minority schools that were very high achieving. But what else do you expect from an elitist white liberal snob? So it turns out, are you going to say this? Well, but it's more than she just wanted the book sent somewhere else. She said Dr. Seuss is a racist. Right. Dr. Seuss books are racist, she but, said. But. And here's my list of 10 books I would have chosen instead of that racist Dr. Seuss. But before you say Let that... Let me guess. Karl Marx's Communist Manifesto. Howard Zinn. <laughs> but, but before you say this, are, are you going to bring up the latest tweet that was found about this librarian? Just oh, two years no. Ago? No, no, no. Just Go two for years it. ago. Just two years ago. This is a good segue into what you're going to talk about. Just two years ago, she was pictured on Twitter, on her Twitter feed... Dressed up as, drum roll. Dressed up as Dr. Seuss, pumping up Dr. Seuss books, including The Cat in the Hat, Wait. the very book that she attacked Melania Trump over. So are you going to tell me now in two years somehow Donald Trump has made Dr. Seuss racist? Um, or, or Donald Trump has made this woman, he's going to make her lose her mind up in here, up in here. <laughs> I okay. find a song for everything. God, you really do. Okay, but we all know Dr. Seuss wasn't always a racist, was he? No. Here's Barack Obama reading to the chillins. For the children. It's, uh, you know, this was before uh, Obama or Dr. Seuss was declared a racist by the progressive leftist lunatics. How many people have heard of this book, Green Eggs and Ham? Yeah. 
This is all the way back in 2010. Way That's before back. Dr. Seuss got into his racism. Right. Even though the man's been this disgraced This is one of the years. classics. It is a great book. A classic? Well, I'm going to try to do... Will she disavow Obama? It's a great book. What are you talking about? A racist? I thought Dr. Seuss hated black people and was oh, racist. Come on. The best rendition ever of Green Eggs and Hair. Oh, let's listen to him. So uh, precious. Precious. This says, I am Sam. Guy, he reads good. Must be all that practice at the teleprompter. <laughs> turn well, the page. Sam. She has to clap because it takes him a half hour to turn the page. Come on, baby. Turn the page. I am. That's Sam I am. That's Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. Now, isn't that precious? They're sitting there, you know, looking like they're wearing Easter apparel. Yes, Got but the beautiful children. little their beautiful little, little children. They're the daughters when they were younger, you know, this is seven years ago. And they're reading this racist book How, by oh the, the racist and Dr. I'll you, Seuss. I'll bet you there are little minority children in the audience. Too. Oh, there were. The camera scandal. Well, and you got the Obama girls here They're being poisoned, poisoned by their poisoned father by the racist words of racist Dr. Seuss according to this idiot librarian oh but that that's not all here's uh Muchel oh and look who's with her uh uh the the the, the woman in the threesome with her and Obama at their at their mansion that's guarded that's protected by a brick wall Valerie Jarrett is that who that is? That is who that is. I don't think that's who that is. It looks like her. <laughs> I'm Maybe going if she got her skin bleached. That white chair is pretty white. Mm, I don't think that's her. You know who I think that is a sign language person. But whatever. <laughs> 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 that part may be disputable. But this part isn't. So, Indisputable. He, yeah, whatever. Here is Muchel running up to give oh. Cat in the Hat, the evil Cat in the Hat, a big hug. And then listen to her. She goes, we <coughs> oh my He's God. so sickened by her <coughs> words. <laughs> we love, we love Dr. Seuss in our family. What a bunch of racists. Listen to this. Ah, <coughs> hi, Cat in the Hat. Hi, Thing One and Thing Two. Welcome to the White House. What's How you dare you have that racist <coughs> Cat in the Hat in the White House, Michelle? Do you notice the skin color of Cat in the Hat? It looks white. <laughs> and, and what about thing one and thing two? What color Hi, were they? Cat in the hat. Hi, thing one. Hi, thing two. Of course, if he would have made them black, they would have acu accused him of uh, putting them in blackface. Right. You can't win with these people. No. Oh, what Good, nothing, good. What have you guys been doing? Just good, hanging out. The first lady Excited. reads Dr. Seuss. This is, it looks like the official White House writing, the official this is on White, the White House, House website. archives. They are going to document Michelle Obama reading a book from a racist bigot, according to this librarian who now everyone is putting on the map. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, who is that black, uh, former black uh, state rep from Georgia who said, oh, I still... Who was confronted with these videos? Oh, on Tucker playing. Carlson's Yes, on Tucker yeah. Carlson's. Oh, yes, I, of course I like the president. And of course, oh, it's okay, yeah. Obama, Barack Obama. But of course, she didn't want to talk about this. She wanted to. So they can promote Dr. Else. Seuss. Yes, they can. Who's a racist. But Melania Trump can't promote Dr. Seuss. Why? Who knows? Okay, the first lady reads Dr. Seuss, January 21st, 2015. All the way back before Dr. Wait Seuss a minute. was a racist. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 just a minute. To hear this new wonderful book by Dr. Seuss. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited too. You know who saw this book this morning before he got on a helicopter? Let me guess, the KKK. Let, let me guess, uh, David Duke. Mm -hmm. uh, let me guess, Robert KKK Bird. The president. Oh, Obama? Obama looked at that racist filth? What a hater! What a self-loather! Oh my gosh! What is it, Uncle Tom selling out to the man? <laughs> he lo we love Dr. Seuss in our house. Oh, you can't How say can it! How you? You cannot say that! No! You absolute racist pig! How dare you say that? So there's a, uh, folks. The left is 
going absolutely berserk. Dr. Seuss is now deemed racist, and you have Obama's, the, 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 the titular head of the Democrat Party, who drove it right into the sewer, but I digress. Mm -hmm. But they are praising and loving on some Dr. Seuss, which probably every good American could, should, and has. Right. I have a feeling It's that unreal. If, I have a feeling that if Melania Trump would have sent... Uh, copies of the Bible, the, oh, the library would have called it racist. I have a feeling if Melania Trump had sent copies of um, Frederick Douglass's memoirs or something, books about Frederick Douglass, um, a black Republican, that the librarian would have called it racist. Right. Yeah, th there's no doubt. Okay, we're going to play this real quick. This is uh, Rush Limbaugh tonight on Sean Hannity. Tonight's Friday night. Uh, September, what is it, the 28th or something like that? Yeah, 29th. I missed a day. The 29th. Okay. And Hannity, you know, God bless him, but he's trying to paint Donald Trump into Ronald Reagan. He's trying to paint Donald Trump into not having a conservative bone in his body. You know, you hear him on his show and over and over, what's not to love? What's not conservative about him? What's not conservative? You know, and Trump does some conservative things from time to time. From time to time. And he also wants to do some very liberal things like, uh, you know, the Porculus bill that started the Tea Party, the trillion dollar almost uh, infrastructure bill. He wants to do one of those, which, you know, through the federal government, which is anything but conservative. But nevertheless, he's talking to Rush tonight, and it really was a good interview. But, you know, he's trying to bait Rush into saying that, that Trump is always a conservative. And Rush Limbaugh says, no, he's really not. He's not ideological. He doesn't look at, you know, Chuck Schumer as an evil villain like real conservatives do. You know, he just looks, oh, it's Chuck and Nancy and... You know, and, and, and all that, but he does have some conservative instincts, and he just kind of pops Sean Hannity's bubble, even though, you know, Russell Limbaugh is to be respected. He was a pioneer. You know, none of these talk show hosts, including probably this podcast, would exist if it weren't for Rush Limbaugh. So I give him credit for about 28 years of his 29-year mm -hmm. career. During the primary, I was utterly disappointed because— utterly. He went from being the uh, you know the voice of conservatism to the voice of populism in Donald Trump, even when Ted freaking Cruz was available, and we could have had the first conservative in the White House since Ronald Reagan. But people like Hannity and Rush Limbaugh licked the boots of Donald Trump, and that's where we're at. But you got to give credit where credit's due, and Rush Limbaugh nails it completely. He says that this tax plan that Trump has is not conservatism. He calls it, quote, pure populism, pure populism, because they bought into the lie of the left, into the class warfare Marxist claptrap that you got to hose the rich. You got to punish success. You know, the graduated income tax, by the way, is straight out of Karl Marx's Communist manif Manifesto, it's one of the ten planks of the Communist Manifesto. So we shouldn't buy into this Marxist garbage they have. Uh, this tax plan has got a few good things in it, like getting rid of the estate tax, but it's really not reformed so much as far as it keeps all of the IRS. It just tinkers around the edges, and so here we go. I think more than any other person, in America, you define conservatism, Reagan conservatism. Now we keep hearing, well, this is nationalism, populism. I look at the president's agenda. I have some disagreements, not many. I think he's got a strong agenda of growth. It would be good for the originalists on the court. We can the, securing the border. You, you talk about national populism versus conservatism a lot. Do you see his agenda as conservative, national populism? Is there a conflict? So. There, 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 there's Hanny. I looked at asking. it. I'm a conservative, and I'm I don't asking. see anything Can national. He's talking about the whole about? agenda, right? Sean, seriously, shame on you, Sean. 
I don't think the president is ideological. Yeah. Um, and I, I've said this a number of times. He, and that's what pops the bubble right there. He, when he sees Chuck Schumer, he doesn't see the guy we see. He just sees a typical New Yorker, maybe dumb and stupid, but he doesn't see uh, <laughs> leftist SOB, uh, whoever he doesn't see. Yeah, we see it that way. <laughs> he, yeah. he doesn't see it, but that, that's not a criticism. I mean, yeah. not everybody's ideological. And Rush Limbaugh has a very difficult time criticizing Trump. So he yes, always, he he always have to preface so it with, well, you know, he'll say something that's a criticism, which would be a criticism if you are the voice of conservatism mm-hmm. of President Trump. When he's not conservative, and you point out when he's not conservative, and you're the leading voice of conservatism, then when you criticize him, it's okay to say it's a criticism. Right. Instead of coming back and saying... This is not a criticism. Yes, it is a criticism. The best definition of populism versus conservatism is this tax plan. Yep. This tax plan is pure populism. Yep. It is put together on the belief, which is a Democrat Party belief, that a majority of Americans want the rich punished, or that a majority of Americans want the rich not to benefit when they do. That's a Democrat Party class and the argument. Yep. If what I'm told is true, and if the president is the reason upper brackets are not going to get any relief, then it's pure populism. He's simply saying, where is the majority of people that I can get the most support from? And he's making a calculation that there are far more people in middle class than there are in the 1%, which is an easy calculation to make. The conservative, and I don't even mean pure, the conservative philosophy of this across the board, no class envy, talk about how great America is, talk about how this will spur economic growth, which will benefit everybody. You don't make victims out of some and uh, demons out of other. You'd look at the country as one giant economic engine that you have to ignite. But if you're going to leave people out of your primary effort to cause growth, then that, that's populism. That's not conservative. That's not conservative. So Hannity looked like, you know, God bless him, he just swallowed a lemon. He didn't want to hear that. What he wanted to hear is that Donald Trump is Ronald Reagan, and Donald mm-hmm. Trump is not Ronald Reagan. Mm-hmm. He's with us, you know, I'm going to just throw out a number, 57.8% of the time. Maybe 63.2. So maybe, maybe Somewhere in between. Yes, maybe 60.175. That's probably the right number. (laughs) So, yes, it's better than Hillary, okay? I get that dumb argument. But if that's your only argument... Hillary's not president. If that's your only argument, that's pretty weak sauce. Yeah, that's a pretty low bar. We've got to raise the bar, people, or we're going down the toilet. Right. We got $20 trillion in debt. They're doing nothing to address that. Nothing. Debt calculator is still, debt clock is still rolling yeah. just as fast as before. Ab- absolutely right. Okay, we're going to take a big turn now to the Huge. NFL, the what is what is quickly becoming the no fan league. Uh, some statistics today, today on the NFL. We're going to hit these relatively quickly. Ticket sales are down a whopping 17.9%. Wow. Now, when is, when is the last time that you've ever seen that happen? Thursday football, Thursday night football ratings, that was last night, they're down 13% from last year. Wow. Now, keep in mind... This is the beginning of the season with all this... All the excitement. crap ramping up. Right. Right, 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 right. 13%. Now, and, and this was after last year being down. Yeah. And last year was down because of the Crackernick. election and primarily Crappernick. Yes, they, they they try to say the election, but the, the ratings never occurred after the election happened. The science so, doesn't say yeah, that. I would like to see the, the, the ratings this season thus far compared to the ratings the season prior to last. Now, I bet he, you it's even more. here is a sign of the crash, and this is on the Federalist. Excellent w- website that we at the Burke Brigade here highly recommend. Has our seal of approval. Yes, the thefederalist.com we have no affiliation with. I'm pretty sure I've never talked to anybody there. I'm pretty sure you probably haven't either, but they have our seal of approval. 
Okay, for what it's worth. And we know that's important to you. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be listening to the Burke Brigade. Mm -hmm. Okay. NFL's brand favorability plummets in light of protests. The NFL's brand favorability... Now, this is what advertisers look at. So this is important. Yep. Drops to its lowest point in the history of tracking. Wow. Lowest point in the history of tracking. You won't see this on CNN, folks. No, you you won't. Um, since September 21st. So this isn't last year or, or two years ago. This is eight days. Eight days. So, it, I mean, it may have been on the clock. On the decline a little bit before that because this stuff started a little bit more than eight eight days ago. But since September twenty first, the NFL's net favorability has dropped from thirty percent to seventeen, almost wow. in half. And that's the morning consult poll. I mean, they are lean left, right? And of course, you know, among Trump supporters. It's even worse. Uh, it's only 11% favorability. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge swath of Americans. It's millions and millions and millions of people. Who are hashtag boycott, chose to hashtag boycott the NFL. Yep. Hashtag boycott the NFL. Hashtag boycott NFL. Hashtag turn off NFL. Okay. Colin Kaepernick, communist Colin Kaepernick, Castro-loving, cop-hating Colin Kaepernick, donated 25 grand to a group honoring a convicted cop killer. But he loves the cops. Yes. He's a, you know, he's a big he supporter loves the of cops. the police. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a uniter. Oh, yeah. If you believe all the talking heads on CNN and MSNBC and, you know, the these idiots that are now coming out, you know, Spike Lee coming out, oh, that whole narrative that he doesn't like the cops is wrong. I mean, forgetting that he wore the cops or pig socks. Right. We're supposed to forget that. You know, it's the men in black scene where they hold the flasher up in front of your face and cause you to forget. <laughs> but, you know, what, what we have learned in life that if you do love the police, you typically do donate to uh, cop killers. Cop killers. I mean, that's obvious, right? So here's the Washington Times today. Uh, Colin Kaepernick started out taking a knee during the national anthem to protest police brutality. But his activism has since expanded to encompass a wide range of leftist causes, including a group named after a, a convicted cop killer. The Colin Kaepernick Foundation, I'm sure that's about as good as the uh, Clinton Foundation, right? donated in April 25000 to Asada's Daughters, a Chicago, quote, direct action. Communist dog whistle. Ray, don't bark. Communist dog whistle. <laughs> a Chicago direct... Chicago, the headquarters of the Communist, Communist Party, Party USA. USA. A Chicago direct action resistance organization honoring Asada Shakur, who escaped prison and fled to Communist, Communist Cuba. Cuba. He, she's the one. She's the one that people... Uh, some people, of course, on the right, were upset when Obama dropped all the sanctions and opened up this relationship with Cuba because it was time to oh, quote, it's time. do the right thing. He didn't demand anything. He didn't even ask. He didn't even say, look, we'll do this, this, and this. If you return this hateful, violent, thuggish, cop-killing woman Who's back never to been the punished. United States to be prosecuted. was it? I think she was in prison and she was... She, she escaped people, prison. Yeah, people broke her out of prison. She fled the communist Cuba. The Marxists broke her out. And uh, they deported her, the U.S. government, and she escaped to uh, Cuba after being found guilty in the 1973 murder of police officer Werner Forster. I want justice! No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! Where is the justice? Where is a social justice? 
I want my social justice. I want her to get the death penalty, which is what she deserves. Yep, exactly what she deserved for killing a cop. But instead, Obama, like you said, that was not even on the table. Right. Maybe this deal that he made with Cuba was a reward for them to them for uh, harboring a fugitive cop killer. Probably what was on the table was for her to get the Nobel Peace Prize, but I digress. Okay. So, FBI statistics... New FBI statistics, this is from Front Page Mag, demolish NFL protest narrative. The Black Lives Matter fairy tale that, that police use black Americans for target practice took another hit as new FBI statistics. FBI. FBI showed the black homicide rate is skyrocketing and that cops had nothing to do with it. You get it? This whole thing is a diversion. It is, once again, the left's manipulation of black people. Contrary to the Black Lives Matter narrative, the police have much more to fear from black males than black males have to fear from the police, writes Heather McDonald. Thomas W. Smith Fellow at the Manhattan Institute and a contrib contributing editor at City Journal. And uh, I'm going to skip ahead here. Uh... So there's this there's this spike, 2016 compared to 2015, where about 900 additional black people were tragically tragically murdered. Uh, new new number is 7,881 for 2016. That was all during the Obama regime, of course, and they were mostly done, I might add, in Democrat controlled hell holes where the mayors are Democrat and the police officers or the, the police chiefs are Democrat, and in many cases, the police officers themselves and the police chiefs are black. But still racism, racism, racism. Mm -hmm. So she says, comparatively few blacks were killed last year by police officers or whites. Quote, among all homicide suspects, those whose race were known, white killers of blacks numbered only 243 McDonald rights. Police fatally shot 233 blacks, most of whom were armed and dangerous, as well as 16 unarmed black men, some of whom may have assaulted officers or offered violent resistance to arrest. McDonald notes that in 2015, a police officer was 18.5 times more likely to be killed by a black male than an unarmed black male was to be killed by a police officer. Mm. So who are the victims here? Here's the money shot. Here is the money shot. Over the past decade, 42% of all cop killers were black males. I'm going to say that again. 42% of all cop killers were black males, even though they are 6% of the population. Now, blacks in total are about double that because we have females. We still have males and females in this country, contrary to what progressive leftists would tell you, which is gender is neutral. So, or fluid. Fluid. Now, let me ask you a question. If you're a police officer and you know that statistic, are you going to be a little bit antsy around black males? Well, around black males, too, who are threatening towards you, who draw a weapon upon you, who won't drop their weapon or comply with your orders. Right, but if you know that... They are 6% of the public, and yet they kill 42% of the cops. Right. It's not racist. It's science. It's math. Right. Okay, and that's why we've got a black former NFL star, Burgess Owens. <laughs> this is just wonderful. He was on, uh, on Hannity, and let's listen, let's listen to what, what he says. He's... Sounds, I, I hate to say it, I'm not taking credit for it, but he sounds a little bit like me. Great minds, right? Okay, Burgess Owens, who is black, by the way, not that that matters. Yeah, let's, 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 kind, of, let's kind of call it what it is. Uh, Callan is a, is, a, is a Marxist. He's a, he's a... Oh, Colin Kaepernick is a Marxist. Bingo, and what was your clue? 
Well, maybe that is, he praises Fidel Castro. I wonder if that's it. Yeah, let's 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 kind of let's kind of call it what it is. Uh, Callan is a, is, a, is a Marxist. He's a, he's a pro uh, Cuba communist. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. We have an ideology, guys. We have to be honest about Marxist, uh, socialist, or not American way. And at the end of the day, we should be talking about the problems in the black community. Here's he is exactly right. All of this, whether it's tearing down the Robert E. Lee statues, mm -hmm. whether it's you know calling George Jeff uh, George Jefferson, <laughs> not quite Thomas Jefferson, George Washington. Uh, racist, whether it's, you know, burning the American flag, whether it's these, uh, you know, disrespecting the American flag during NFL games, that's all Marxism. It's all cultural Marxism. It's intended to destroy America and destroy our culture, destroy our heritage, uh, you know, and he gets it exactly right. And then Burgess Owens, former NFL player, he's going to say what the real problems are in the black community that the left caused, the Democrat Party caused, not because there's anything wrong with black people. God knows I'm married to the most beautiful one right here. It's because the Democrat Party has replaced fathers with big government. And it's destroyed the black families. It's got them dependent on the government. And it's, it's, it's caused a nightmare. It's one of them that we need to be talking about. We, we, we represent 30% of the black population, yet 40% of violent crimes is, 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 is by the black, black men. And by the way, 93% of that is against black people. We have not talked about that. How about this? 83% of our black teen males are not are unemployed. And this has been for years. 70% of black men forsake their marriage. These are the kind of conversations we need to have because it leads to hopelessness. It leads to anger. When men are not taught to be men, they look themselves in the mirror and they will rebel. And what we have right now, well, we, have, point. we have all these black we have all these black men that, that now live, we're riding around in, in their cars thinking that because I'm black, I'm going to be pulled over and not be treated right. And instead of understanding what it is to be respectful, to understand that there's an authority and that you can just as easily de defuse a situation if you're not thinking you're already being uh, 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 targeted. We have a problem with our royalty black class in this, in this country who lives the great American dream and tell other people they can't because of racist white people are against them. So we did, we did man up and understand what our real fight is. It's not black and whites. It's elitist. It's democratic elitist. I will agree that with live a great life. Wow. Yeah, he's, he's absolutely right. I mean... Black people have been uh, convinced by Democrats that they are victims, all while Democrats are victimizing them. Right. Black people are being convinced that uh, uh, it's white Republicans who are at fault for all the ills in their lives, even though it's Democrats who are manipulating them. Black people, if you, if, if you bring up the fact that black people are killing one another in droves. The Democrats accuse you of being racist and trying to, quote, change the subject. They want people to believe that police officers are using black people as target practice on the streets and just picking up a, round, a random, you know, like it's an epidemic. All police officers everywhere just go out every day and thinking, what black person can I shoot today? And shooting them. That's, that's the narrative news. that the Democrats want people to believe, even though that is not true. When the reality is, it's black people who are actually killing police officers in droves. Who and are fellow killing black people. Well, I said fellow black people, but who are targeting police officers all because they are a police officer. Right. I mean, think about, you know, one of our favorite shows is Blue Bloods. It's a show about cops, the Reagan family in, in New York City. Not Ronald. <laughs> Frank Reagan. And uh, Tom Selleck, by the way, great yes, actor. Yes, very great actor. And one of the things that they um, show sometimes on that sh show is the fact that if a crime is committed in a project area, which are mostly inhabited by blacks and Hispanics, the people won't talk because you're viewed as a snitch. Right. You don't want and, to be a snitch. Yes. And, then, and they'll actually you know, look the other way when the thugs who run the area attack the police officers. That's reality. That's what's or happening. Or attack people for ratting on them. Right, right. It's exactly what's happening. So that's why these places are hellholes. Okay, so um, 
Oh, the other thing I like about that show is the uh, obvious Jesse Jackson character. Remember that guy? Right, who ended up getting perp walked. <laughs> that was a great day in my if life. I we could see that with Jesse. <laughs> and Al. By, 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 by the way, did he ever pay his taxes? You mean Al Sharpton? Yeah. Al, no, I don't think Al Sharpton <coughs> ever paid his taxes. Yet he was a frequent visitor to Obama's White House as uh, an advisor. Oh, yeah, great. Okay, are you ready for your blood to boil? Because this absolutely sets this my hair on sick. fire. This I used to have abs- respect for this man. Uh, now I hate his guts. Shannon Sharp. The American flag is racist. See, these protests against the American flag, they've gone from, you know, Colin Kaepernick saying that it was a protest against the American flag to after it started backfiring, they were they started saying, you know, Spike Lee and all these, oh, no, this was, you know, ancient history last night or two nights ago, Spike Lee saying, oh, well, it's not about the American flag. Mm-hmm. And so now they're, they've lost that argument because they're doing it during the freaking national anthem. Right. So now you have Shannon Sharp saying, well, yes, it's about the flag, but the flag is racist. And it's just a piece of cloth, people. Just a piece of cloth. This spoken from the big mouth of a man who was paid millions of dollars to play football and now has a, a job on television where he gets to talk and get paid millions. To on Fox Sports 1. Email Fox fired. Sports 1. He demand they fired. fire his unappreciative ass. Okay, and... That's not the worst of it. That's actually the best part of it. The worst part of it is, is that he said nobody has fought for that yeah, flag. Nobody Nobody's has fought, fought for, the for flag. this. Nobody's All these veterans that are, you know, naturally and understandably Gold star upset. Families. Gold star families who lost their children. Yep. Let's listen to this utter buffoon. This is on a show, I believe it's called Undisputed, with Skip Bayless as the co-host. Uh, I, don't, oh, I know, I know, Ray. Ray does not like leftists. Ray, zip it, zip it, Ray. Okay, Skip Bayless, but the deal is, Skip Bayless is a big lefty too, and even he is outraged by And now he's trying to remain calm, but he's like, and you look at the look on his face, he's like, what the hell are you talking about? Flag. A lot of Wait, is this up all the way? Hold on. No, I, th- I, th- I, th- I think it gets louder as he opens his big fat mouth. A lot of people with symbols of patriotism. But what does that symbol actually mean? What does the, what does, the, okay, you keep telling me that the flag it means so much and it's opportunity and freedom and liberties. Okay. Can you honestly say that everybody in America has freedom and liberties and opportunities? No. Well, if you can't answer that, then we... Let me ask you a question. What other country is as free and all the things that you just mentioned as this country? You know what? Get the hell out. ...have a problem and we would like to have it addressed. Correct. Just stop trying to sweep it under the rug. But see, now, as long as you paint that narrative... Oh, it's the anthem. I can't know. I, anybody that does something to the anthem, when we know what the anthem was originally written for and who it was written by. Let me guess. Slavery. Let me guess. Slavery. Have you been a slave? You're a multi-effing millionaire. They got rich in this country, and you obviously don't have the brain the size of a pea. No other country would you be anything more than a beggar. How dare you? Okay, the flag. Okay, we understand what the flag, what, it, what does it represent? When did this narrative come to be that the military and the police own the flag and only them? I can go buy a flag and I can hang it up in my backyard. But you wouldn't. You would burn it. Hey, we, 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 need, we, need, we need to stop this, Skip. We need to, this, the, the flag is a piece of cloth and nobody... Just a piece of cloth. That's it. And you know what? You are a piece of... That's what you are. The flag is a piece of cloth, then you're a piece of, you know what? And it smells rotten. Fight for a piece of cloth. Because no, they do. Don't, don't say that. So we- See, even Skip Bayless, a big lefty, don't say that. That's disgusting. What the hell is wrong with you? Can I get a comment from you, Mrs. Burke? No, I'm just listening. 
that's so, that's let me ask you a question. Let me, country. That's what it represents. So you so they'll so they'll fight for a pair of jeans. Own that. They'll fight for a pair of jeans. That's what we They're fighting for a pair of jeans. I can't even listen anymore. They're fighting for a pair of jeans. Yeah, yeah, that's it. When you stand up and put your you hand know, over the heart like a good American. You're, you're saluting a pair of jeans. I thought they were supposed to be talking about sports. Oh, you mean it's Fox Sports 1? It chosen in 1776 that, that references yeah. our nation. You get, better get believe it they is would. Skill. The symbol. The symbol, symbol of our country. It's a symbol of our country. So now, now he's going to say, no, the symbol is racist. Well, what are you well, talking about? Okay, symbol of our country. What are you talking about? So the symbol of your country uh, uh, is racist. Symbol of your country of your is country. racist. country. Yeah. You know what? If you don't like this country, the great Hall of Famer Mike Ditka has got a word for you. And let's let's play it. This was in a radio interview this week. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, play. It's not playing. Dead gummit. Is it going to play? Mm -hmm. Let me reload this. So, Sh Shannon Sharp, while we're, while we're reloading this here. I'm sorry, this thing crashed. Um, okay, let's, let's, tr let's try it again here. CNS News has this today. It's absolutely great. Where do you stand on this whole Colin Kaepernick issue? Well, in what way? What do you mean? Oh, do you have a problem with Colin Kaepernick? I think, I think it's a problem to anybody who disrespects his country and the flag. If they don't like the country, they don't like our flag, get the hell out. <laughs> That's what I think. So if you're asking me... Get the hell out! <laughs> hey, Shannon Sharp. Hey, Kaepernick. Or Shannon Not So Sharp. Get the hell out of my country. I, I have no respect for Colin Kaepernick. He probably has no respect for me. That's his choice. My choice is that I like this country. I respect our flag. And I don't see all the atrocities going on in this country that people say are going on. I see opportunities that people want to look for opportunities. You know why you don't see the atrocities? Because they're not there. Because they're a figment of the left's imagination that can't exist unless they have victimhood and victims so that they can point other people as being the villains. Now, if they don't want to look for them, then you can find problems with anything. But this is the land of opportunity, because you can be anything you want to be if you work. Now, if you don't work, there's a different problem. Well, it was a problem for Colin Kaepernick, because he obviously didn't work too hard on his craft, and now he is out of the NFL because he sucks on various items. Okay. It has been a great Friday evening here on the Burke Brigade. We appreciate you tuning in so much. The Burke Brigade brought to you by the Liberty Daily. Your conservative alternative to the Drudge Report. Tune in to the LibertyDaily.com. Go to the LibertyDaily.com. We would really appreciate it. God bless you guys. God bless America. You already said it. God bless America. Say something else. There's something else. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a great weekend, and hashtag boycott NFL.